Yeah, I'm Caroline Field from, from Riverside. Um, Riverside's been um, growing and developing for a long time now. Um, we say 1928, that's when we started in Liverpool, but in fact, up the, the last major merger we did was with the English Church of Hazard, who predate Riverside, but you won't find us saying that. Uh, we, still, we still count ourselves in 1928. Um, we've been working within neighbourhoods all the way through that time. In the days when um, we expanded into Wirral, which was across the water, so across the merge from Liverpool, that was real, real major moving out of our local area, that was. Now that we've worked in Scotland, uh, and we've, uh, we've, uh, we've merged with our World Trade, we've entered into a constitutional partnership with our first partner in Scotland. It's a different thing. The one thing that has remained in common the whole way through is that we work locally. We, we can't work across the spread that we work, across the different kinds of accommodation that we manage, and within the neighbourhoods that we support without actually operating just locally. And so um, we describe ourselves as national, we, I describe ourselves as regionally trumpy um, because we've got several regional focuses around, around the country. But always we work within the neighbourhood. Community engagement, which I'm, I run within Riverside, um, is resident involvement and it's community regeneration. We have a central team which looks at strategic um, direction for the work that we do and looks at a major project bringing external funding on a major scale. But actually we've got local staff right through the country working, working in each area. And in Merseyside where we've got 20,000 properties, we have 10 locally based staff um, in, in, the, in each local area within, within Merseyside. Um, in the rest of the country we've got one person that covers you know, Old Carlisle, another person that covers Riverside North East which includes Gateshead, Newcastle but also into a tunnel. So, so there's a huge spread, it varies. And basically what I'm saying is, I'm dead jealous of you. To have that local focus, and you, I think, you know, to have that local focus and to be in an area and be able to put your strategic uh, effort and your local effort into that, into that focused area is fantastic, it's really good. But we have, we have the estates, probably now, coming on to about 40% of our stock is estate-based, but different estates around the country. But the bulk of our property remains pepper-potted, um, Small, um, small groups of properties in a local area. Going back to the days when a large estate was 100 properties. You know, and that was massive when we looked at that one. It was just not phenomenal. So what we've got is this issue around trying to take a strategic approach but trying to act locally and trying to understand what's happening in the different areas and then why that's happening. Is it because we're not the major land world? Is it because we're taking more of a more partnership approach or less of a partnership approach? So what we've got is strategic um, focuses around employment training, financial inclusion, which includes affordable warmth, um, uh, low cost uh, lending, uh, welfare benefits uh, work. We do a lot of work around green spaces, around specifically around neighbourhood management at the moment. And we're starting on looking at our older people um, because we tweaked, uh, despite the fact we've got 6,000 shelter properties within Riverside stock, so that's about just over 10% of our stock. We've got 12,000 older people in our general needs zone. So twice as many older people, not in supported care, not in focus, but designated housing. So we're now starting to look at actually how we work with our older people, and not behind that. Uh, well, our holy grail is one of young people. We keep trying to find out ways of actually engaging with them, um, delivering projects that count, specifically around young people, and actually finding ways to engage with them. So we put all this effort in. We have a, a team of about, um, 15 the core team in, in Speak, and then another 40 people around the country um, who are working on, on community regeneration, regeneration activities specifically. And we have tried to find ways of measuring outcomes. And so we've looked at social return investment. Um, we did some work, uh, more, more like conversations with Dave um, Pullings uh, and around Affinity Sutton, some work they were doing a couple of years back. We used, I think everybody will use it, the water deprivation index just to see how things are changing over a period. We have something we call our neighbourhood investment strategy tool, which actually sounds like what, what you're talking about there, where we look at um, the MGIs, that look at how that's moved over a period. We take certain measures internally and we track it and we rank our neighbourhoods. And I can't remember our neighbourhood, I mean, we've got 100 neighbourhoods? Yeah, I think we're All right. So we've probably got about 120 neighbourhoods around the country that we rank using this, this neighbourhood investment strategy. Um, comparison tool. So we know where we're going to put our effort, we know what's making a difference, we know what the key drivers are, and generally it's not, generally it's actually what's happening out in the real world outside. 
it's actually what's happening on the ground. So we try to measure, for a long time we try to measure, we talked about measuring the outcomes of what we do, but at the moment we're not trying to do that. At the moment we're having the rest because the effort and the resources it's going to require to actually come up with something that's, that's tangible and, and, and testable is so immense, it's going to take a lot of that time from doing projects to actually sort of trying to work out the measurements. So at the moment we count, we count our outputs. We use something called CR tracker. And I know uh, a number of people around the room use TP tracker, uh, which is Arena Partnerships um, uh, counting of, of resident involvement activity. And it's the ability to take down all your tenants' details into the system to actually uh, attribute time to their engagement with you, and then from that to measure the, the return that the association gets from the engagement activity across the board. It, that helps us because what it does is allow the inputs to be, to be owned and managed locally and the, the numbers to be counted locally, so it's owned by people actually doing the work out on the ground. But at strategic at the centre, we can actually point information together without any great effort. What we asked um, TP Tracker, the organisation, to do was to adapt the TP Tracker, and they created a for us called CR Tracker, Community Generation Tracker, which we've been using for about two years now. And that, uh, as distinct to measuring the input of individual tenants, that measures um, the uh, number of projects, the number of time goes and inputs into a project, and then it counts whichever output you choose to measure. So you can set your own measures up and allows you to actually follow. So we know how many people are engaged in their employment and training activity in the other side across the country. And we know of those, how many people have been uh, um, gone through the training program, how many of those have achieved employment, how many of those have stayed in employment for six weeks, 13 weeks, 26 weeks, three to four weeks. We can track it all through through CR Tracker. So what we've concentrated on doing for the last year or so is, is getting our inputs measured and getting our outputs recorded in a way which is no massive administrative burden on staff around the country, but allows us to get the, the results from it at the centre. And we now use the outputs from that into our, into our dashboard, into our um, monthly performance reporting, so that not only have we got the INE and everything else, but we've actually got hundreds of people trained, rehoused, whatever, as part of all that measure. And we can delve into as many combinations as big as you want to. And I think we can carry on delving forever and not come up with any causal relationship. Because a causal relationship is not necessary within our organisation, and it's not necessary... It certainly isn't only related, but it may not be primarily related to our own activity. And I think what I'm saying to you is, is what you were saying before, which is that um, there, is, there is a job to be done in actually assessing what the outcomes of your activity are. But I don't think that's one organisation, I don't think it's one association. So we're, we're on hold, is what I'm saying to you, is we're, we're on hold waiting to get some consensus out of what could count, what might count. Your research would be great, it would be really, really helpful to us. The Fed's audit is going to be fantastic and we've embraced that wholeheartedly. Um, and it's, it, it's, that's the numbers that will help you actually reach your way through to it. But I think what we need is for everybody who's got an interest in it. So if you look at the overarching organisations, the Fed, CIH, CMGM, we just come up with a, a, a common approach. And when, we, a, when we're getting somewhere close to a common approach, then we'll, we'll rock down the outcomes. Uh, but until then, I don't think they're prepared to. In terms of a common framework, the way I, it doesn't look like a framework, and I've taken the word outcomes off my framework, because I haven't formed these outcomes. Um, they describe that the elements were more intent. And I think the most important thing for the framework then is in how that's delivered and the activities um, on the ground become very context specific. There may be some commonality that you want to pick up, but I think it's really important to have space for local success criteria and where people already are. And it could be that there's one element that really, you know, lights their fire locally and they want to do work on that. You're going to work with that passion and then try and work across some of those things and then reflect against the framework. So when we think about measurement, I think actually theory of change frameworks are, are most useful as reflective tools to say how well do we think we're doing then noting down and celebrating some of that change that you are doing, there may be some metrics behind that that you also do. But if that process of consciously looking at the change, I think, is, is valuable. So, there are actually questions.
<laughs> well, the, the, the original question and answer was quite simple, actually, which is whether you were working with. <laughs> but I mean, it seems to me that the framework, even though you said it's, you didn't use the word outcomes on us, the framework seems to me to be, uh, uh, going back to what you were saying about trying to reach some agreement about shared outcomes, is, is certainly helpful in that respect. But, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Sorry. One more for Elizabeth. Um, are there any of these? toolkits or frameworks, because some associations are quite small, but they can actually pick off the shelf off your website and self administer them, because that would really, that'd be really useful for us as a sector. Um, so in the one I described, yes? Yeah. Plug in the leaks.org. All our tools are on there. They're supposed to be written so people can just download the tool and use it. I mean, that for me holds a logic of an intervention more than a, as a measurement. Mm -hmm. um, the commissioning tool that we social return on investment and she used some of those elements and I suppose in the commissioning process we're also challenged then with when would you use social return on investment because of the time within a very big portfolio and I think there's different ways of measuring and also I suppose what I should have said in that commissioning discussion is I also think going forward we should look at different units of value so we can, we can put financial proxies on things and you know it sort of gets there and it conversation about comparing um, different investments. But what if you can do a well-being unit? And people are using a tool that allows people to express subjective values and you capture that. It's very simple. And you hold that in itself. And you have an environmental piece of information that tells you how many, which carbon you've used. And then you might have your financial or your local economic impact. You hold those three pieces of information. You can choose to roll them together. Um, but we know that they are core value measures for some of the things which are held more dear or things like the environment where we've got really to work at the um, And I think if you can design those things, then you can start having, you can recognise the change that you're starting to create. And now we don't have that as yet, but we do have some better sense of what wellbeing measures might look like that are difficult for now on online. And lead the well in measure because I picked up from the last three presentations or something about the tenant's voice and what we measure. Um, I think Peter had said that you, you, you try not to measure, you try not to impose what people's lives, but then that one is probably going to come from this as well. And we've been looking at how you said that happiness measure on to get to like this and how come. And I think the other issue is obviously with the external factors that the direct measures are <laughs> and, um, and I understand that often the issues on the states are external government issues. I mean, we all know it's not enough jobs. We all be training in the like, if you're in one part of the country or at the moment anywhere in the country, it's physically not enough jobs. So, do we want to be measuring that as an outcome? How can we get to work? What is it about? Is all we can do ourselves? So, if we're not doing job creation, like, as we are businesses in the community, it's all we can do ourselves. balance with those other more tangible measurable I think the sort of the voice of the tenants. And also it's the idea of um, housing associations and um, even more so cooperative movements about the democratic element to them that is done by tenants, probably not as fashionable as it used to be. But that's something 